if one is not comfortable with anything, he has a right to vote their conscience. But it should not be influenced by no one until that member or members of parliament is convinced of any vote or any law, they have a right to choose and make that decision. The minute we put a gun to the head of members of parliament and passing legislation because of consequences of others, then we have a problem. Madam Chair, we have people in this country who needs help, people who needs jobs, people who needs homes, people who need and need, but have always been an issue where the big ones seemingly push their will and their might to get what they want. And while, Madam Chair, I believe these laws are important, yes, um, but there are also things within these laws that we feel as a faction that needs to be omitted out of it. The more and more you read some of these laws, it takes away the powers of the members of parliament. It no longer allows members of parliament to have such debates. It allowed those in charge to unilaterally make decisions, take decisions, without the members of parliament and without the House of Parliament. Unless the members of parliament pays keen attention to the ministers when ministers make their own decisions. Because what we have seen the trend, Madam Chair, in these legislation, a lot of changes is coming where members of parliament no longer gets the opportunity to debate certain changes if these legislation is allowed to pass the way they are being presented. We saw it in almost two to three legislation already that our faction have a problem with that. Madam Chair, I am not here to influence no one vote, no one decision. While I agree wholeheartedly with these regulations, these legislation that is important for our country, but we feel as a faction that also the same speed, the same urgency, the same will that these legislation could be written, could be brought forward, the same speed legislation should come to Parliament on the increase of old age pension, a living wage, a better life for our people in this country. We believe a better policy concerning the issue of the six months contract should have been. We believe so many different things should be a priority. But we feel today that Yes, we have to strengthen our institutions. But our institutions also needs to recognize our government when government itself is not recognizing their own institutions, their own obligation, their own licensing in this country. We have a problem. And like one time, we had a closed door session in here, and it was said, Houston, we have a problem. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Minister. Houston, we got a problem. Definitely Houston, we got a problem today. Um, our faction and our political party believe in these institutional laws that has to be passed. But the way these laws are coming and the way they're being presented, we have some fundamental differences in it. 
And that is the reason why our faction has an issue with this law here today. And when I took the oath, I took the oath to vote on my conscience. And the minute others now influencing your vote because of who said and who said not and the urgency, then we got a problem. Then the whole democracy of one vote near conscience is through the door. It's totally through the door. Madam Chair, there is so much things need to be fixed and need urgent attention. And like I told the minister and many other ministers, when are we going to fix our issues that are fixed, affects our people? Truly, once and for all. When are we going to fix that? When are we going to get the legislators who are willing to sit down and change the legislation and to present something that we could say is in the benefit of our people that makes their life better in St. Martin. Minister, we had OVE, we had the CCs before, um, and now we're here today. And I would like to know if all of us said in all these different meetings that we had, if any consideration was taken into the law that you're presenting today. So is it, are, were there any changes made since um, our opinions, our grievances, our advice, our suggestions? Were any of those put into the law, or is this the exact same law that was presented the first time around? That the honor. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, Powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NV. Uh, Madam Chair, indeed, um, I, I think uh, I would be brief in continuing in this meeting as since the meeting was originally, uh, uh, as you mentioned, it was called, there has been a lot of other um, areas at which this point has been discussed uh, for sake of openness as a member of the, uh, of, of the faction meetings. It has been discussed as well in faction meetings. Um, at IPCO, it has come up as well in one form or the other especially when we talk about this term, democratic deficit. It's something that um, for two consecutive IPCOs, we've heard this term being used. And it, I think at least um, the civil lining that I can report today to the public is that I'm hoping that there more eyes have been opened to the fact and the reality um, of some mistakes that have been made in the way we have agreed to become a so-called uh, country um, within the kingdom. 
Madam Chair, today I just wanted to highlight uh, one new development since then that I was able to become aware of. And it, it is here to kind of exemplify um, that these issues that St. Martin is facing, there are other countries around the world, or so-called countries, that are opening their eyes to, wait a minute, we signed agreements with former colonizers or former um, um, owners or whatever in an effort to get more autonomy. And indeed, when we look back in having such a haste to want to become independent, mistakes have been made. I would look at, for example, a Forbes article that I saw recently that, sh that showed that Haiti actually had to, when you adjust for inflation, when they went for independence, it actually cost the country $19 billion is what you would actually have had rather than the other way around where an independent country should seek repatriation, should seek funding from their colonizers in order to move forward as an independent country. These types of mistakes have been made. But Madam Chair, today I actually want to highlight one that involves our kingdom partner. And this was a case that was brought um, to the international court between the territory of Mauritius and England. And Madam Chair, in this case, it's very interesting that one of the bodies or, or entities that testified to, to the benefit of Mauritius and their claims against the United Kingdom was who? The Netherlands. Very interesting to see some of the positions that the Netherlands had in, 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 in defending the right of Mauritius to their full self, self, um, measure of self-governance. Madam Chair, allow me to read just one point, for example, within the ruling. According to the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the right to self-determination of peoples non-exhausted by a one-off exercise, but a permanent, continuing, universal, and inalienable right with peremptory character. However, there are essential differences between the colonial and post-colonial context in regard to this entitlement. Madam Chair, it further states, the submission of the Netherlands here today is to testify that we believe it is of utmost importance that everyone who seeks the right to full measure of self-governance receive such unequivocally. Madam Chair, um, I think if we read what we're hearing here in such a strong stance of the Netherlands to defend another nation, I hope and I pray that the Netherlands has an equal or even a larger and stronger opinion on ensuring that St. Martin does have its rights to full measure of self-governance. Because again, as I, as I highlighted in the first round, I highlighted ways that we are not. We do not have our full measure of financial capacity. We cannot borrow a single dollar or invest in our own country without the permission of a Dutch established institution, which is the CFT. We cannot sign literally what is called a country decision, a national decree, a landsbesluit, cannot be done and is not formalized even when our appointed ministers have decided and come. That is not finalized until who? The governor signs. And who does the governor represent? The Netherlands. All of these things point to the fact that St. Martin does not have its full measure of self-governance. So I don't think the point of the meeting, Madam Chair, was to debate whether or not we have a full measure of self-governance. It, it is to debate what are we as members of parliament going to do from here to correct this mistake. And I'm going to use the term mistake loosely because I wonder how intentional uh, some of these things that have been included in the Kingdom Charter were allowed to come in.
How you doing? You busy? I hear just paying some bills, taking care of business. You know what it is? <laughs> I know you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want. I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, Ma. I'll get online with Viv now. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices. The Winwood Islands Bank. Now your online banking partner in progress. Who you're for? Last week, the Prince Willem Alexander School celebrated their 45th anniversary since the school was established. The island needed a place of learning for children with special needs and those who required a modified environment for learning instead of the conventional classroom. As we celebrate, we acknowledge that we still have much work to do in public education. And together, as we unite and focus, we certainly will make progress. A visit to NIPA this afternoon, I, along with other members of my cabinet and staff, will be visiting the National Institute for Professional Advancement to meet with the board of the institution and to receive a report on their operations. After reviewing the information, that will be presented, I will be able to give an update on their progress. The Phillipsburg Jubilee Library officially opened its doors to the public this past Monday morning in a temporary location on the first floor of the Adolphus Richardson Building on the WGAH Nisbeth Road. Last Friday, the Acting Secretary General, Ms. Shermina Powell Richardson and myself, we attended the soft opening of the temporary facility which houses a children's section, a juvenile section with most of the exam books, an adult section, a national history section, a study room, and a computer lab. While the library board is still working on plans for the renovation or reconstruction of their own building, the much valued asset to our community is again accessible to her patrons. I commend the board and staff on their efforts and I wish them much success. Readers are leaders and I encourage all, young and old, to visit the library now just a stone's throw away from their property. The second Caribbean Wellbeing Conference will be held on St. Martin from August 5th through 6th, 2019, under the theme, Fostering Resilience, Creating a Culture of Wellbeing in Schools. And the focus for the Caribbean Wellbeing Conference will be on teacher well-being, student well-being, and family well-being. 
The Caribbean Wellbeing Conference is being organized by the Student Support Services Division, the SSSD, also by the St. Martin Youth Council Association, and the St. John's University of New York. Anyone interested in presenting at the Caribbean Wellbeing Conference may submit their proposal by Saturday, March 9th, 2019. For further information about the conference, including the guidelines for submission of proposals, one may visit the Caribbean Wellbeing Conference Facebook page or contact the conference chair and founder, Mrs. Olga Mussington Service at 543-1235. A Career Guidance Counselors Workshop. Career Guidance Counselors at the Student Support Services Division, SSSD, see many students usually in their last two years of high school, and they're pondering what will they be doing next. In some cases, students who have recently graduated have no idea what they want to do or how they want to move forward. Consequently, the SSSD is once again organizing an interactive workshop entitled Choosing a Career or a Study. And this will take place on March 19th, 2019. And it is geared mainly at the above mentioned individuals. This free workshop will be held at the SSSD's offices from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. So be on time. One, two, three, four. This is how common it is to develop a mental illness. One out of every four. 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 But there is hope. Today, most mental illnesses can be managed and treated. Visit your general doctor if you feel concerned about your thoughts and behaviors or have some difficulty dealing with some of life's issues. If you have been diagnosed and are suffering from a mental illness, keep in mind these four points to help you manage your mental health. One. Get regular checkups with your general doctor. Two, stay on your treatment plan to prevent relapses. Three, find a strong support group in your family and friends. And four, never be afraid to ask for help and look for the one in terms of your illness. Remember, you are not alone. We are as close as one. Two, three, four. Learn about mental health illness by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. question is for the Minister of TIAT. Uh, you mentioned in your opening statements about the upcoming conference that would be held on St. Martin. I think the most pressing issue for the island for decades now has been the establishment of a gaming control board. Has that made any uh, progress so far? Thank you, Alita. Excellent question, as it's deeply rooted in our governing program and, of course, is the reason for this forum in September of last year. Uh, 
I attended the third annual uh, Anti-Money Laundering and Gaming Control Board Forum in Aruba. Following that, members of the Ministry of TIAT within the organization attended a follow-up session in Florida, and now we're having our own event with the steps to finalize our own Gaming Control Board, which is indeed deeply rooted in the governing program of this current coalition. Thank you, Minister Johnson. Stephen Cerillian of PJD2 Radio, you have the floor. Thank you, Excellencies. Good morning. My question is for the Minister of Tiat. How close are you to realizing um, pre clearance status for St. Martin? Thank you, Stephen. An excellent question as well. Uh, of course, for the Ministry of Tiat and Government by extension, is readily has already prioritized from the inception uh, U.S. pre-clearance. We have met yesterday with the U.S. pre-clearance committee, members of the airport, as well as with the Council of Ministers. Part of those discussions included some of the pending uh, concerns that had to be addressed within government matters, such as the extension of the concession, which falls under the Ministry of TIAT. Of course, there is the draft bilateral agreement, which will be sent soon. Um, in the next few weeks, which will be the first step to really finalizing the process. So indeed, St. Martin is very far along in the process of handling U.S. preclearance and bringing it home to St. Martin. I do want to reiterate that it is indeed part of the airport's overall restoration plans. It's part of the economic revitalization necessary for this country. And indeed, when we attend the closed-door session of Parliament, which is slated for today, Wednesday, it is the intention that the members of Parliament are also apprised of the progress of U.S. preclearance, the benefits of U.S. preclearance, and of course, where U.S. preclearance will take St. Martin into the next decades to come.